So without further ado, let's invite Dr. Pamelia to join us as she's going to talk to us about burnout and stress in organization. Hi, Karina. Thank you so much for that wonderful organ um, for that wonderful introduction. I think that was really nice, and it's really nice to see everybody here. Um, yeah, and it's I I hope that we can make it like a very nice interactive session. Anytime you want to pop up and just share anything, you can type in the chat box. You can share your thoughts, your comments, or questions. I would love to keep coming back to this to see to help you out. So thank you so much, everyone, once again. So um, let me know if you can see my screen yeah i'm just about to share um, my screen with you okay let me just see can you see this everyone you can all right thank you so much okay so you know there's a lot of things that are going that are going on around us and then we hear a lot about um the occurrence of burnout there's a lot about resilience that we hear as well. There are different kinds of things that all of us are facing at the moment. So I think I, I just want to share with you that as I'm sharing this, I have gone through it. Sometimes I might go through it again as well. Nobody is the perfect expert in this, but I'm hoping that we can share together and know that this is a safe space for you. There is no judgment here as far as so. All right, so this is how we all are like functioning a lot of the times. I think you might be able to relate to this. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you you can relate to this, that we have like a lot of things that we're doing. We have our job that we're functioning in, but we also have multiple things that we're juggling with at the moment. And, and so multitasking is some of the things that we do. But if you know about multitasking, right, I think you might have heard that people say multitasking is a myth. We can't actually do many things at the same time. What we are actually doing is we are very quickly task switching. So if you're driving and texting, you're actually, there's a minute millisecond where you're like switching your attention. So just like that, when we are trying to do our work and eat at the same time, how many of you do your work and eat at the same time? No judgment, remember? It's just, I totally feel for you if you are some of them who do that because that's sometimes how you find ways to cope with the kind of deadlines that you have or the kind of things that you're facing with at the moment. So this is a, a little bit of insight for you. I think you are aware of this, that if you saw the statistics last year, right? Do you remember that we came to a situation or a kind of uh, stats where a level whereby according to stats in our country, we saw that there was about four suicidal cases happening every day. And this was like middle of last year. And if we look at the stats on the right, if you look at the pie chart and the bar chart, you can see that you know, a large amount of it was between the ages of like, um, you can say late adolescence. OK, so the late 13 years. And then the second largest is this age group, 19 to 40. OK, can I have a, a, a shout out? How many of you here are like 19 to 40 years of age? OK, so you can put in the chat box me if it's you. OK, I actually do fall in that category at the moment la, at the moment. So let me just come to the chat box and see um, anybody here. Same, same, same. Do you need any help from us? OK, all right. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see a few raised hands about eating and working at the same time. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that. All right. So coming here, right, it's um, if any one of you can share your age group as well, if you want to share, I, I am actually still in that age group. I'm going to go over to four series already very soon. <laughs> so actually, it doesn't mean that, OK, we are definitely some of those who have health, mental health issues. It means that we this age group is actually at risk because it's one of the highest at risk because we can see that the, in, in the nation, we can see that you know, the highest number of cases, the second highest is actually among this age group. And what is happening in this age group actually, a lot of them are actually going through burnout or maybe going through personal issues at home. And they are trying to grapple with all of these while also balance with their work and also their own personal life. And that is why it can be seen as very concerning. And coupled together to add to the whole load of this, right, is the pandemic situation. So a lot of people have this thing called pandemic fatigue. So how to know if you have that? All of a sudden you feel like so fed up with the situation or you feel like when is it going to be over? Or you suddenly feel like demotivated to really adhere to, you know, some kind of procedures as well. And suddenly you feel like it's so difficult to cope. And you feel like, you know, so frustrated with the whole situation. And some people are very afraid of uncertainties. Like, is it going to be work from home? Is it work from office? Is it both? Some people find it very difficult to juggle. And then all of a sudden adjusting with work from home and then suddenly being called back 
So some people feel like it's so difficult to be, you know, facing this kind of uncertainty, which then can lead to pandemic fatigue. The good silver lining, or we say hikmah di sebalik musibah, when I say the, the silver lining behind this is that there's something called or known as post-traumatic growth. So this is when you can have the transformation following the trauma. So we had like this, you know, um, pandemic fatigue and some people had a lot of trauma facing, you know, losing loved ones losing people that were close to them, losing some freedom, losing a lot of money or losing health even. So following this trauma, right, there, there are either two roads we can go down in. Either we can go down, spiraling down hill and really go into a very dark place, or we can try to feel and embrace what you're going through and see if you can get help right now and then go towards a path of transformation. Can you think of a time when you were really, really sad before in your life and it was such a bad experience and then somehow when you look back at it now, you feel like you've grown from it? That is post-traumatic growth. It's when you can transform something so sad or so difficult into something beautiful in your life right now. That it becomes like a flower in your life. So this is how uh, human beings are made. There's a lot of things that we, we have in us that we don't realize. So actually, Sometimes, right, have you ever heard people say like you're stronger than you think you are or you're stronger than you know? It, it's true that we can have this kind of internal strength. We might think that we're not, we don't have it in us, but sometimes, right, it's all about reaching down deep down inside and then getting that slowly to that place. But don't be in a hurry to get there because some people move at a different pace. Sometimes some of us need more space. We need more time to get there and you, it's up to you to take as much time as you need. You never ever have to feel rushed for that. So this is some growth that actually, it's a good kind of growth that you can get to. Okay, a little quick check-in to ask you guys today, all right? So how many of you feel you can relate to the picture on the left? Or do you feel like, no, I think I'm the right one? So maybe it's not today, maybe for the past one week, or let's say. How many of you feel like you can relate to the picture on the left? So maybe if you say left, can you type left in the chat box if you feel you kind of relate to the right one you can type right in the chat box so left means like oh you know it's just so much of work and then you're looking at the laptop and you're like oh feeling stressed so right is where it's a bit more serious this one and you feel like there's a lot of emotions that i feel and it's just coming out in tears okay so i'm gonna come to you now can you share with me um let's see a lot of you say left some of you say right and some say left and definitely left um, yeah, you're stronger than you know. I, uh, let's see. So most of you say left, but some of you do say right. And I want to thank you for those of you who say left or right. They are both valid and important emotions. What about this one? So the left one is more like you're the gadget woman or gadget man, right? Inspect the gadget. So you have, you got a laptop, you got a handphone, you got an iPad, you got another smaller laptop. Then you are like with all these things and you're like multitasking in all these gadgets. Or are you the very traditional one? Like I need all my papers and I'm like so boxed out with my papers. Okay, let's see which one are you? Right, 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 right. Okay, so most of you say right, okay. So I do like that paper thingy as well. So I'm, I'm kind of like in the middle actually. You can say middle also. So it's hybrid, okay. That's the word for the year, right? Hybrid, both. I would say hybrid of solar. So you can kind of relate to that actually. It's kind of like a hybrid thing happening, right? Exactly. So what what's good here is that we all are on the same page. We kind of, or, or most of us, we realize and we recognize that we have all kinds of emotions that we're facing, some very intense emotions. And also we have a lot of things that we're juggling with physically. Some of it paperwork, some of it like, you know, um, digital work. So all of these things are what we're going through. So some of you might feel like, I feel shy to type anything right now. Okay, so you know what? I've got good news for you. There's something here that's going to be anonymous. Okay, so if you can whip out your phones, everyone, and type menti.com in your phone, and then just um, you can type this this code here two nine five eight nine one zero three. You can actually scan the QR code there. I'm also going to paste the link for you if you want to if you find it easier to click on the link, or you can just like click and scan the QR code here. So this is when you can actually share with us, okay, a little bit about what you might be going through. Okay, so let me just get this to for you also. Those of you who want to actually um, share, maybe you want to click on the link, okay? So it's already in a chat box. Oh, okay, 
Sorry, sorry. All right. Thank you so much. Here. All right. So if all of you can now um, type it in. All right. So I'm going to come and share screen. OK, financial issue. So the hardest issue is financial. Migraine is coming back. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry about that. You know, sometimes um, this could be physical. It could be psychosomatic. So psychosomatic means that, you know, you feel a lot of emotions and a lot of stress or maybe a lot of, you know, heightened emotions. It can be anxiety, it can be stress. It can be like overwhelmed and then it's manifesting physically as a headache, as a migraine. It could be that or it could be physically dehydration. It could be anything at all that could be causing the migraine. And a lot of times it's psychosomatic, you know, time management. Yes, managing staff, um, insufficient salary. Yeah, a lot of people have been sharing that um, outside. Even I, I hear a lot of people saying they're overworked, underpaid, work delegations, workload, financial, personal problems. Too much additional work, OK? Work in no time. Yes, the deadline is last week, right? Everybody says that I have to work like my deadline is last night or late today. He cheated. Oh gosh, I'm sorry about that. That is really definitely a very, very difficult situation. So can you imagine having to deal with a high workload with personal issues like this even? it's It can be really hard, really challenging. So dealing with unwise people, too much ad hoc work coming in all of a sudden, yes, overthinking, not knowing what to do in my career, keeping everyone happy, um, you gain weight. Yeah, I think a lot of us can relate with the holiday weight and also PKP weight, demotivated, family issue, emotion, marriage, um, positive, and you've been paranoid. I know a lot of people have been going through that as well. After being positive, they feel really afraid. Now, this, these are very valid concerns that you have here, you know, things not going as planned, kids, leaders, bosses, fiance, boyfriend, um, work, and all of these things, right, even financial, these are all very valid concerns. And not sometimes it's not easy for us to share with each other because we feel like it's personal, it's private. We're afraid of getting judged. And it's so hard for us to share with people. So, but it's nice to know that we are not alone, right? When I look at this list, I do feel happy that we are not alone and we're all going through something. I do feel sad as well that we're all going through a lot of things. But you know what we can do? That's why it's good for us to talk about it like over here on this platform, because knowing what we're going through is one thing and then knowing what to do next, where to get help next, because we are not alone. We really are not. So the next step would be how do we deal with it on our own? And what if it's too big for us to deal with our with it on our own? We need to get help for that. So that's what we're going to be doing today. All right. So we're going to see a little bit about how can we actually cope with it in our life if we can do it on our own. Let's see how we can actually tackle this. OK, so coming to this right now to identify if you might have a little bit of burnout. OK, how many of you feel this way? So this one is where you feel like your body is the car okay everyone imagine like you you yourself and your body right is the car and the drive the you know sitting at the front seat is it really you sitting in the front seat if your life is the car right now who is the driver of your life do you feel like it's you do you feel like it's your google calendar do you feel like it's your colleagues your family or who exactly is in the front seat and where is your position in this car? Is it the back seat or is it the booth even? Maybe it's not even in the car. Do you feel that way? So let's see. Um, anybody want to share it? Where do you feel you are seated at? So this helps us to look at things in a perspective, you know, for example, right? You might have wanted to do a lot of fun things in your day, but then all of a sudden you feel like my goals always take a back seat and eventually it flies out the window because there's no time. Any one of you can relate to that kind of a feeling? OK, thank you. Hi. Yeah. So any one of you can relate to this feeling where you feel like your life or your body is the car and and your, you know, your to do list usually takes. Is it taking a front seat or a back seat or is it not even existent in the car? So this is a very good insight for us to realize, actually, to realize and recognize what we might be going through. OK, you might be feeling maybe not so comfortable to share that, but try to reflect within yourself. Is my goals actually taking a front seat or do I always put myself last? Is it always last or is it not not even existent in the body of the car? It's actually in the back, you know, so this over here, right? 
is for you to recognize if you might be going through some psychosomatic symptoms. OK, so everyone, as I'm sharing this with you, I would like you to kind of like um, reflect and see if this might be kind of like you as well sometimes. OK, so can you feel sometimes like somebody somebody shared just now about the migraine, right? So that's actually kind of like physical pain that you feel that might be caused by psychological symptoms, might be caused by stress or right, you really cannot take it, you know, like the amount of things going on at the office or in your organization or in your home and it's just too much for you all the whole cocktail of it combined it comes out as pain or do you notice any colleague of yours suddenly missing deadlines suddenly forgetting very important things you know like i have gone through that before actually where i suddenly forgot something very important like you suddenly miss meetings and it's like oh my gosh i i can't believe i missed that i can't believe i forgot so usually that happens when it's so taboo and it's like really too much in here and overload and that can happen and manifest out as missing deadlines. But it can usually be misconstrued um, by, you know, like people who usually miss deadlines right in the office or who are not performing. It usually can be misunderstood as an employee who's not performing and they're not really like competent right now or efficient. So if any one of you might be noticing your colleagues doing this, or you yourself doing this, know that that can be can be a lot of underlying issues here. Fatigue, physical fatigue is another thing that a lot of people go through and even difficulty sleeping. How many of you here can relate to like overthinking at night? I know a lot of people saying that to me, like they feel like it's so hard to shut down at night. Like you go to sleep, but you just can't. Or maybe you sleep and then you wake up at 3 a.m. and you look at the clock and like <gasps> just Two hours passed. I thought it's already morning and like I cannot I feel like I didn't even sleep and I just can't believe it's already time to wake up and you just your mind is like working. I want to ask you something interesting as well. How many of you don't shut down your laptop? You just hibernate and hibernate and sleep, sleep, sleep. So <laughs> anybody here, if it's you, say me. OK, so me, me, me. All right. Um, I think too much overthinking before sleeping. All right. All right. Don't shut down your laptop. OK, I have been very guilty of this before as well. OK, <laughs> but I try my best right now to shut down. You, the, the reason we don't want to do it is because we have lots of important links that are already open and then we haven't finished our work yet. So we want to carry forward to tomorrow and then like leche to close all the links and open back. Lanti. But you know what happens usually if you don't shut down just like your laptop, right? Your laptop is like sleeping, but it's not really off, isn't it? Just like that, we are like sleeping, but we're not really off. We haven't really shut down and detached. We are still like on in the background. That's what's happening. You remember the movie Avatar and how like they connect their plaid with the the kind of like the tail is it of the banshee animal. Just like that, we have an invisible cord with our laptop, I tell you, because we are working in a digital world right now and we just like this actually kind of like signifies what we are going through. Right, my Sarah? Exactly. <laughs> OK, so OK, everyone, I want to I want to ask you something very interesting and important. OK, this is very, very important. As I'm sharing with you the stages over here, can you share with me what stage you're in? And you can be totally honest if you're OK with it. OK, so stage number one is the honeymoon phase. This one is usually people who just join work and then they are like, yay, who needs a weekend? I don't need a weekend, such a waste of time having a weekend. I can work every day, actually. That is stage number one. Honeymoon phase. Stage number two is when probably you've been working, you know, for the last second lama and like quite some time now and you're feeling kind of stressed like, you know, two days a week in a work week. And then you go on to chronic stress when it becomes more and more and you suddenly feel like you're stressed like, you know, um, four days a week, three or four days a week. You're like, oh my gosh, almost every work day, almost every work day is a stress day. And you look like this person over here in the chronic stress picture. And then when you don't deal with it and you don't do anything about it and you just allow it to fester and fester more and more, you slowly go into the burnout stage, which is stage number four. Stage number four is where a lot of people I know have been in stage number four. I think <laughs> all of us can relate to that, I think. So stage number four is when you feel kind of stressed like five days a week. So this is not to say that something's wrong with you. It's not to say that something's wrong with your job. It's not to say that something's wrong with your organization. It's to say that the whole situation and circumstance that is just playing out at that moment 
it's now presenting itself in that way and there's something that we need to do about it and that suddenly put us in that kind of a stage right now and that stage is five days a week kind of a burnout you know you kind of feel stress almost every work day and then we go into another stage i know a lot of people like a lot of clients have shared with me where they feel like i have accepted it already Every day is burnout day <laughs> and you know, I don't, I cannot imagine my life being different from this. I don't think I can even imagine having joy. Like I can't remember the last time I actually enjoyed my day. Every day I'm just a slave to my, myself actually, and also to my Google calendar. And then I'm a slave to my, 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 you know, laptop, um, to my family, to my friends, or I just feel like it's a habit now for me to feel burnout and it's like, um, business as usual kind of a thing already and that's habitual burnout when you go on and go on and go on and until one day all of a sudden you start to realize these symptoms becoming more prevalent and then it becomes really dangerous and that's it okay so <laughs> these are like some common symptoms anybody left right anybody want to share okay before this i'm sorry i forgot something can anybody share with me then what's your number anybody want to share Oh, somebody already shared here. Thank you so much. Okay, so Haniza says stress. Um, PM care say like um five 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 five. Okay, that's another one. <laughs> level another level. Okay, five 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 five. Okay, this one is like four five. This is really serious here. Chronic stress. I really appreciate you guys sharing. You know because um this is really nice because like sometimes um somebody once told me Pam, you know when you ask this question here. Actually, you have to plus one because nobody's going to tell the real thing. They're going to say four, but actually they're five. They're going to say three, but actually they're four. But I don't think you guys are actually really telling very sincerely. And I thank you. <laughs> OK, so I really appreciate that so much. OK, so thank you for sharing that. It's it, it doesn't reflect anything bad about you as an employee. No, you're not saying anything bad about anyone. Don't worry. This is a safe space. It doesn't mean that you're complaining about anything or anyone. It just means that in your circumstance, this is what you're going through. And it's nice that we know that because then we can look out for each other, right? No one is to be blamed here and we're not saying anything negative. So um, I kind of accept the burnout. I can sometimes anticipate it. I can't do anything about it. Exactly, uh, my Sarah, that's what I mean. Like sometimes we go through a phase where we feel like there's no way out. I'm in this tunnel and I don't know how to get out, but I know that I have to do it. And that's when we need a bit of help actually. And it's not wrong to get help for that you know so i'm gonna come to that in just a little bit yeah before that i want to ask you something like what about this picture here <laughs> okay anyone can relate to this this is like physical symptoms of stress law katakan we are feeling like stress but we feel like i don't know i'm just dealing with it i'm just pushing it aside i'm suppressing my stress so guess what when you suppress and suppress it comes out somewhere okay and <laughs> this is where it comes out so sometimes um when, when you're stressed your body produces cortisol and cortisol kind of loves to accumulate a lot of fat around the midsection and cortisol kind of like um, it's something that is really can really affect our health physically as well and physiologically gaining weight, eat too much, hair loss, no sleep, mind is awake. Exactly. <laughs> so true. Um, oh, thank you so much, Karina. That's so sweet. Sending my Sarah some hugs. All right. So um, it's true. These are some things that can happen to us. Hair dropping so actually this is like a very common thing you would know your own symptoms you know another more serious symptom is over here where you have like um blood flow what happens is when you're very stressed there was this story you know about this guy he went to see a doctor he had a very high cholesterol and he said that i don't have any health issue do you know that i work out to the max i you know and the doctor said maybe your food intake not so good and then he said i am the kind of person that eats so well i'm so healthy and the doctor said okay so you work out well you eat healthy are you stressed and then he said like yes i am very very stressed and so what happens is when you're very stressed right it can affect the flow of your blood and also it can make the platelets in your body kind of sticky and then it kind of like affects your blood flow it affects your blood pressure it affects your cholesterol so that's one of the things that can happen and then over here just to share with you very quickly here is did you know that stress also has an effect on our dna yes exactly in our dna so at the edges of our dna right we have this protective casing okay and that casing is called telomeres so whenever we are stressed actually right you know what happens to that casing it gets shorter and shorter so it gets shorter, it gets diminished, right? So when that thing gets shorter, it shortens your lifespan. It kind of speeds up aging, 
Remember when our old folks said to us like um jangan cepat marah nanti cepat tua. Actually that's kind of evidence based. If you look at this, it kind of makes sense because it kind of shortens up that kind of a part. So actually this it's kind of related to our DNA as well. Okay, I'll come into your chat for a while. Okay. Even causes liver disease. Yes, fatty liver, yep. So true. Hair loss, fat, hair loss. Stress can cause skin problems, exactly. It can cause breakouts also. Especially what they normally say is um the T zone here is usually the stress kind of pimples. This part is the heaty kind, is it? I'm not sure. You can I mean that's what I've heard about before as well. So yeah, it can definitely and a lot of times everyone, if whatever you notice in a person that is angry, any angry butts here or anybody you know who's angry but okay, <laughs> or somebody who just cannot function at work, like like mental block. And they just do not have any idea suddenly and just cannot function or keep procrastinating. Usually, right, that's the tip of the iceberg. What's really going on is beneath the surface of the water and that's the underlying issues that's happening. These underlying issues usually can cause those effects of the top. So a lot of times in a meeting, whether it's Teams, Google Meet, um, Zoom, or you know anywhere we will see our you know colleagues looking like the picture on the left right on the left so but really we don't know who is actually suffering inside like the picture on the middle or inside they are reaching out for help actually and do you know a lot of people tend to go into loneliness and isolation because they feel like i don't want to disturb people let me just deal with it and I'm just going to isolate myself. So isolation is one of the first things that people who are going through a lot tend to do. Not everybody, but some a lot of people tend to do that, especially in this day and age, right? So coming to you again right now, um, when people are stressed and we are not known that we are stressed, often or not, when doctor asks, are you stressed? And we ourselves can't determine, are we stressed? Because it's habitual stress already. <laughs> yes, may. Very true. That's a scary one, right? When you do not know that you're stressed and like, this is your normal. This is your new normal. Being stressed is your new normal. You know, I know some people when like having a day without stress makes them feel scared because they're like, this is alien to me because never have I ha felt this way in a long time. And if I feel this way, I'm scared. What's going to happen next? And is something bad going to happen because I'm not used to being not stressed. So actually, that's a habitual burnout and something that we need to recognize in ourselves as, as well. OK, just a quick question. OK, I want to ask you guys something very interesting and important over here. Can you share with us right now um, which column can you relate more to? Would you say, you know, most of the time I, I can relate to the bullet points on the left column? or most of the time I can relate to the bullet points in the middle column or is it mostly in the right column? So and don't worry, whichever, whichever that you choose, right? OK, so I want to give you a disclaimer. It doesn't mean that you can. It's like a checklist and then you can diagnose yourself. No, 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 no. This is not like this is not a diagnosis kind of a thing. This is just for us to know roughly where do we fall under because when we know, right, we can prevent. We can prevent it from becoming something more. OK, so this is, um, let's see, mixture lah, first and second column, right? OK, yeah, I think I have been through the first and second also, middle. Um, the right one, maybe if some once in a blue moon, <laughs> if really. OK, so anybody else, middle, 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 mixture of first and second. OK, most people first and second and then middle, right? OK, um, yeah, first and second and left and middle. That's true. OK, so why is this important right now? It's because this helps us to know where we fall under. It doesn't mean that you have this. OK, the next slide I'm going to show you it doesn't it does not mean that you have it. It just means that, you know, when we know what symptoms this has similarity to in the DSM, the DSM is actually a diagnostic statistical manual that psychologists use. When we know which one it matches, kind of overlaps with, we know how to prevent it from becoming more. For example, like us, we said that, you know, I felt the left, I felt the middle mostly. So we know now that, you know what, we got to take care of ourselves to make sure that it doesn't become something more serious and severe. I do stuff to help myself to not make it become severe as well. And if it has be already become severe, that's also OK. It doesn't mean that something bad has happened. It just means that we can still get help. Help is always out there. 
it doesn't mean that you're weaker. It just means that we're all going through different things at different stages of our lives in different journeys that we're all going through and you can still get help. It's never too late at all. So it's good for us to know where we are at then we can make some adjustments. Like for me, I had to make some adjustments just to share with you. Like I had to like mute, you know, some some notifications here and there to help me have a bit more like, you know, like you can focus better and help you be calmer. So there are certain things that you can do that you will know how to adjust. Okay, so let me come to the chat box to see. Sleep disturbance, uh, middle, middle. Okay, definitely. So sleep disturbance can fall under middle. Sometimes you can also fall under the left as well. Yeah, so all of these things are good. Okay, so now I thank you so much for sharing that. Now let's come to the how, okay? Now, you heard of the saying before, when life gives you lemons, you make, okay, what do you make everyone? When life gives you lemons, you make, oh yes, music therapy is helpful with those kind of symptoms, right? Okay, so when, when life gives you lemons, you make, everybody, you make, Lemonade! Okay, <laughs> yay! All right, and let's Asianize it a bit right now. When life gives you asam, what shall we make right now? Okay, you make... <laughs> okay, so now that we're Asianizing it, when life gives us asam, we make... Okay, um, asam... Uh, asam amoy, oh my god! <laughs> Okay, Asam Boy! Okay. Alrighty, so let's try to learn how to make Asam Boy together right now. Okay, my favorite. Anyway, number one. Okay, one of the main things we can target here is mind management. So learning how to handle our mind is very key. You know, this is something that takes a lot of practice. I mean, just because I'm sharing this with you doesn't mean I'm an expert and I've like perfected it to the max. I think that we are all learning at the same time because to be a perfect, um, like a, to be somebody who has aced it in life, we gotta be perfect and ain't nobody perfect, right? So to go through this, right, we are all in a learning process. So let me share with you some very nice tips from psychology that helps. And one of the good things is that, asam boya. Yeah. Okay, one of the good things is that mindfulness is a very nice activity that I start practicing, that I have practiced in a lot of areas, but sometimes, of course, you know, it takes a lot more practice, but I noticed that it helps a lot with our mind. Have you ever, like, been with, um, maybe had a tea time with your family members or your friends, and suddenly you just can't focus on what they're saying? Like, maybe f out of the 20 minutes, right, you only focus for five minutes, and then you're, like, nodding, and you're, like, are you even, how about right now? Are you guys actually listening at this moment? Or are you like, sambe sambe, let me check my email and do some report. <laughs> no judgment, by the way, it's okay if you're doing that. I totally understand that feeling. It's probably because you have a lot of stuff today. Okay, how many of you, come on, you can say me. Okay, never mind. Okay, so anyway, mindfulness goes like this. You really be present in the here and now. Like, you really focus on the here and now and really try to like bring your attention to it. How many of you eat while doing work or you eat while watching a movie? So sometimes when we do that, right, it's it looks so harmless, but after a while, you kind of like are not really focusing that much on either one. Either you're watching the movie and eating your rice like a popcorn or you're just kind of like not really there. So that can really affect how we work also because you tend to always be so used to focusing on five things at the same time. And then you end up not really being mindful on any one of it, right? So it takes practice, you know, sometimes to do that. Another one I want to share with you very exciting here is about um, thinking styles. So thinking styles, we all have our ways of thinking. We all have our thought patterns. So these are some very common thought patterns that you have here. There are more, but these are the most common ones that I find in a lot of people. So the first one is called the catastrophizing thinking style. Okay, when I'm sharing this with you, you can think whether is this me or you can think I know somebody like that. Okay, so you can either and you don't have to mention the name or what okay, you can just think within yourself. Okay, number one is the Mr. or Miss emergency. So this person kind of does the catastrophizing thinking style. It might be you sometimes as well. Okay, so what it means is that whenever something happens that doesn't go as planned, they would panic first before react, responding. They would panic first before doing anything. So if you think about our, our body, right, in three sections, so we have the thinking part, 
we have the feeling part, we have the behaving part, just as an analogy that I heard somebody mention, it was really nice to see it that way. So the thinking part, the feeling part, the behaving part. A lot of times people act first, then they then they feel regret, then they think I shouldn't have done that, <laughs> you know? So ultimately it should be the other way around. We think and then we feel and then we do. So catastrophizing thinking self is the Mr. or Miss emergency. The second one is the Mr. or Miss self sabotage. So this one is the kind of person that tends to blame themselves. Even when things are not their fault, they're like, it must be me. I think it's my fault. And they tend to personalize and they tend to just blame themselves and they sabotage themselves. They feel like they're not good enough. You know, they have very low self-esteem. Anyone can relate to that one? I think I, I know a lot of people who have been through that. Okay, self-sabotage. Okay, nice. I, I love that you guys are so open. Okay, guilty as touch, as charge, self-sabotage, self-saboteur, miss self-sabotage, mixture. Okay, all right. Yeah, I think sometimes we do feel that, right? It's like you kind of feel, you know, low about yourself. The, the third one is the Mr. or Miss Black and White. You think in absolute terms. Either my colleague or my boss or my subordinate is efficient to the max, or if they make any flaw, mistake, or any kind of weakness, I'm going to ask them, I'm going to put them in my blacklist, in my invisible invisible black book, which says that you are lazy, or you are inefficient, or you are just bad. So, you know, there are some people who think in that way. Whenever we think that way, right, we will label people even outside our everywhere so when we will label our friends we will label our family members either you be perfect if i find one black dot that's it i'm gonna label you as bad so or something you know so this all or nothing thinking style can be quite problematic because it becomes very extreme in in kind of like polarities so it's good for us to actually be balanced in that way so the mr miss black and white are people who would think like Either you send me a perfect email or you make this mistake and that's it, man. I'm going to like be so angry. And and then they kind of think in terms of like either I'm perfect or I'm a failure. That's when it becomes extra scary also because they put that same label on themselves, not just other people. They do it to themselves too. If I make a mistake, that's it. I cannot accept it. How can I make a mistake? I put myself in that black book now. I cannot accept it. Like I hate myself. So a lot of people do that to themselves. A lot of times it's like perfectionism. Like how can I not do this in time? And so we become our worst enemies. And that adds to the burnout actually sometimes. So if you look at the other one, we have the Mr. or Miss superhero. This one is the kind of person that finds it quite challenging to delegate, you know, and I I think I can relate to that sometimes, like, um, wait, let's see, very stressed with this type of people, hey, 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 high expectation, I cannot do mistake. Yeah, sometimes it can be stressful with um, any kind of character as well, right? Because of the, the expectation that they put on themselves, they might put that on others as well. So the Mr. or Miss superhero is the kind where, you know, they feel that they cannot delegate and they just have to be the one that does it. It's like very much I should, I must, that kind of a thing. The Mr. and Miss Imposter is that they feel like they have this filter. They have a special filter, penapis, where like, you know what? I cannot see all my goodness. I can only see the bad stuff about me. I'm only going to tackle all the bad things about me. All the good stuff just flows through and I cannot remember. So they always feel like they're never good enough. And they always feel like, you know, they're a loser. So ultimately, for those of you who can relate to what we saw just now, a very good technique is to use this technique called the yes but technique. I find it kind of helpful as well if you if you look at it this way, right? So if you say to yourself like, I cannot make mistakes, I have to be perfect. Okay, we can say in this way, yes, I made a mistake, but it doesn't mean that, you know, I am a failure. Yes, I, I like to do things perfectly, but it doesn't mean that I can't make mistakes once in a while because I'm only human actually, right? So this yes but technique can be very helpful actually. And instead of putting so much of pressure on ourselves, we can be compassionate, um, know our worth and be rational, be calm and look at opportunities. And one more thing that is very important about the mind is for us to recognize what is within our control and what is beyond our control. What is beyond our control, we have no power over that. The economy, the country, certain things that are going on, we have no control over that. But what's within our control is how we choose to respond to things. Someone can shout at you, you know, 
and yell at you, send you an angry um, email or voice note or something. But you can kind of like pause and take a little bit of a third person view and look at it and say that, am I going to allow this person to control my emotions right now? Or am I going to have that safety bubble around me and choose how I want to respond? You don't have to be an absorber. You can be a, you know, a transformer instead of a receiver. Yeah, you can be the transformer bumblebee or whatever. You can be the transformer. You don't have to absorb their energy because remember you have everybody has a kind of aura around them, you know, like in the energy. So you don't have to let somebody change that about you. If you are a calm persona, you bring that calm persona wherever you go, even though people are, you know, chaotic around you, work is chaotic around you or people are chaotic around you. You can see what can I do that's within my control that can choose how to respond. And another thing that's very interesting here that I got to share with you here is psychic bandwidth. OK, so we all know about Wi-Fi bandwidth, love, right? We know about Wi-Fi. I think when I went, when I was, you know, it was uh, 2020, I was using a different kind of a Wi-Fi <laughs> speed and we all know how it felt like to work from home. So you need to like really share your Wi-Fi, your laptop, your digital you know, gadgets and everything. And it can be so stressful. So think about our mind in that way, like Wi-Fi bandwidth. When many people are sharing the same bandwidth, it becomes slower and a bit more difficult, problematic, right? So same like that. We all have something called psychic as some um, psychic bandwidth, which means that it's like your psychological energy and space in your in yourself. So when you are not focusing on one thing at a time and you're not flexible and you have too many things open, you know, not just in your laptop, but in your mind, it's like you kind of drain that creative juices and you don't have that creativity in you to think outside the box, you know, and it's so difficult for you to really function and to even think creatively, even simple thing would be so difficult, right? So this is something very important for us to have because a lot of times our mind is crowded with all kinds of worries and thoughts. This is the, you know, the alpha mode that we need to go into. Like, you know, you have like the beta, then you have theta, we have alpha. This level, the alpha level, right, is when your mind is not too crowded and you are at a state of peace and calm. It's something like when you are in a, one of the states in your sleeping where you go into this very nice calm phase that you can think about things. You know when else we have this very nice calm phase? Anybody can guess? When else do we have this very calm phase? You know, anybody else can guess? Can you can you guess? Okay, um, I know some people that are so in control and so emotionally stable when the surrounding is crazy and depressing. I wish that I can be like that. <laughs> you can, Haslina. Actually, the good thing about this is that it can be learned, you know. It's not just something that, of course, yeah, it's a trait, an innate trait. Some people have that. But if you don't feel like you know that yet, you can still learn that. That's the good news. Like how to be in Zen mode, despite what's happening around you, is being so mindful. It takes practice, actually. Once you practice doing that, I would recommend playing a very nice calming music in your laptop or phone for like two minutes. Two minutes can be very long for us, you know, because we are so used to like, we live in an age where people used to make 15 minute YouTube videos and then now that's too long for us. Then people went to TikTok, right? And then they make like three minute video or two minute. Then now the latest one is like shorts, is it? Shorts like one minute. So <laughs> like that's our, our bandwidth now is people. So try and see if you can Focus for two minutes on a music, on a, on a musical piece. Just clearing your mind and focusing on your breath. You'll be surprised that it feels so long. Seriously, try it and see, and then you can see how it feels. Um, it may be stressful too if it's with small kids. Yeah, exactly. It can be stressful with small kids as well. That's why finding a way to cope with that, right? It's not easy, but it's like finding a way to kind of like go into that mode. Maybe that's why it's, sometimes it's good to actually even teach our kids as well, like um, a little bit about this, like how to manage themselves, because sometimes it can be beyond our control. Uh, sometimes how they behave and react uh, when we are at vacation time. Yeah, you're right. When we're at vacation, you're right. Another time is when you're in the toilet. <laughs> Seriously. OK, remember the song Lady, OK, by uh, Lionel Richie. So apparently he wrote the second verse in the washroom. Kenny Rogers was like, yo, bro, come on, we got to get the second verse going. And then he was like, I know, I know, I don't have it yet. And then he went to the toilet, then he got inspiration and he was like, I got the second verse, Kenny. And then he got it. 
did anybody know that? I mean, <laughs> that was what I saw in one interview. Like. And then it was interesting because you can see that, um, yeah, toilet is the most comfortable time. <laughs> exactly. No one can disturb you there. Even if they disturb you, it's locked. So actually, right, why is it washroom? Why is it toilet? Because you go into a state where you're not trying too hard to think of something. You're just going into the state where I'm just waiting right now for my job to be finished here okay so you go into the state where you're not trying too hard and suddenly your brain has these ideas so it's pretty interesting to see that happening so you go into this zone where you're like so in the zone and you're so focused you get into the state of flow which is a very nice state to be in and then you get this directed focus as opposed to scattered focus and you can really focus so much on what you're doing and then all of a sudden your productivity level increases so just like what we were discussing just now, right? It's very important for us to manage our expectations and our standards to ourselves. Because sometimes, right, we put a lot of expectations. And so what I, what I tell myself is this, like, I say to myself, lower your expectations, lower your standard, fam. So actually, it's like a trick that I do with myself. I'm not gonna actually do a bad job, but just saying that to myself, helps me to get rid of that perfectionism and procrastination because I need to do that because otherwise I'm like, it's not good enough. I can't submit it yet. I can't do this yet. I can't. And then it becomes like, you know, that that's why I always tell my students, send me your ugly draft because I don't want something beautiful. I want it. I want it ugly. And they're not going to give me something ugly. Usually they just, it just takes away the stress of like, it has to be perfect. Okay. The second step that we're going to look at which is one of the things that causes our burnout laugh in our life, okay? Um, yes, inshallah, one day when we're aging, we get more calm. Yes, Rasnani, that's beautiful. It is called restroom for a reason. Wow, boom, that is such a nice revelation. I just realized that, restroom, <laughs> so true, okay? So step number two, human relationship management. Um, humans are one of the reasons as well one of the biggest stressors that we face right so does it mean that we eliminate the stressor which is human beings no then we have to go to some mountain up there and live there because like be away from human and i don't really want to do that right now i want to be with people so how do we do that we need to actually yes saying no at the right time to at the right to the right things to the right person so this is a skill that all of us need la. I'm, i mean i also am still trying to you know like perfect this so this is something that we all need to do not just saying no but also managing you know detox digital detox as well um trying to let me see what uh okay trying to actually manage digital detox from this and your laptop and everything so you, it's very important for us to have a kind of a cut of time. I know this is very challenging. Believe me, I do. But it's so important for us to have that. Because if not, then very easily you can slowly, slowly seep into stage four or five. Seriously. So this is how we need to have mental compartmentalization. When you're doing something, focus on it. It's not selfish. It's actually self-care. A lot of people feel like self-care is selfish, but it's not. You need that. Imagine if you are not okay, then you cannot help your family. And then you cannot help yourself. And then you cannot help in your organization and you cannot be productive there. We love our family. We love our organization, but we also need to also love ourselves, which is something that we need to, we usually put last, right? So that part is so important. And I think we all need to remind each other. Even my friends remind me too. And we all need that reminder. And it's, it's okay because no one is perfect. We need that. We seriously do. And somebody said something about music just now. So true. Music actually does something to me as well. I, I need that so much. You know, when I'm, when I'm going to work, when I'm coming back on the way, I do listen to music to unwind even before I sleep. Um, comedies are something very important. Spending time in nature, um, it's something very, very nice that you can do, you know, making sure that you have some time, screen off time, because we are always on screen, but we really need some, you know, time off away from the screen. So off screen, totally making sure that you have, you know, when was the last time you actually went for a walk and observed like the flowers by your housing area? So that's something important. Social support as well very very important music at the beach relaxing and coming yes exactly you know what i like to do i actually like to go to youtube and type um beach ambience and 
that way I can go there every day. I'm from Penang, so I really need the beach. So like, at least that way I can like, you know, um, play it every single day. And then, you know, the human brain is so amazing, you know. Do you know that it does not know how to tell the difference between a fake imagination memory or a real memory? That is why when you watch movies sometimes, you can cry because number one, you have the picture suggested to your brain. Number two, you see that emotion, you connect with that emotion, you identify with it, you attach an emotion to that picture, your brain interprets it as it's real. And that's the part in the brain that does that is called the reticular activating system. And that's why it doesn't know how to tell the difference. So when you when you put on this kind of ambience, after a while, you kind of really go into it. <laughs> you kind of feel like you're there almost, you know, so it kind of helps. The third one is called energy management. We all have energy. Remember I was telling you about the energy, right? We all have energy. It's physical energy. It's internal energy. It's also the chi, you know, um, that you have. So men, like physical food, we know we need physical food for our bodies, right? We need that. So that's the physical food part. That's for the energy. We also need mental and emotional food, which is actually so your mind. That's where I like to listen to a lot of good talks. I like to also listen to a lot of nice podcasts or even um, music and comedies, emotional food, you know, spending time with friends and family and even your colleagues having a good laugh. Team building is so important. Having this kind of thing is emotional food, actually making sure that every day you do something that you like, even if it's for a few minutes, having a meal that you like, not just for the physical, but also for your for your soul. Like, you know, really spending time doing things that mean something to you. You deserve that. You really do. Your life is meant to be holistic, not just focus on one thing. And then the spiritual food is something very important, which maybe sometimes we accidentally overlook or we do not know that how important it is for us. So, you know, there are a lot of research that shows that when we spend time sp spiritually, what happens is there's something happening in our cognition. There's a very much, very nice creative process happening. There's something like a very soulful wisdom that you get. And then this we can get through prayer, um, mindfulness, zikir, um, praise and worship, anything that you do that it can even be just meditation. It can even just be looking out your window with some nice music. It's kind of spiritual because you are reflecting upon your life and um, the creation that you have around you. So you kind of really keep in touch with yourself, like your soul in that way. And that can be so helpful. I'm going to come to you for just a moment. I think something here. Food energy eventually causes uh, gaining weight. <laughs> okay, that's why it's really nice for us to actually spend time on the other part of physical energy, which is the burning it, like um, either exercising. Exercising doesn't mean jogging. It does not only mean running. It can also mean like just, you know, doing anything that you love. Like some people like Zumba or it doesn't even have to be that. It can be just walking around your house for five minutes. That's also exercise. Anything that you enjoy doing, it must be something you like. Somebody once told me to go um, like, you know, running or something. I said, I don't like that. So I'm not going to do it. Then I said, I love cycling. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> so like whatever that helps you, because do you know that um, exercising releases endorphins? And that is something that we need so, so much. Seriously, endorphins is a feel good hormone that helps you feel that nice feeling inside. Um, coming to this part just now, reading. Yes, exactly. We need that. We need to read for fun. We always read for like work sometimes, right? Try to talk to your pet. Oh my gosh, I love that too. I mean, I don't have a pet, but I, I, I was talking to my plants. That was my little pet. I, I was growing some plants and then that helps a lot. <laughs> so yes, having love for yourself and then love for others is so important. So loving yourself. I mean, this sounds so cliche, right? How do we love ourselves? There are so many things that we do, which is so unkind to ourselves. You know, skipping a meal is unkind to ourselves. That's the opposite of loving yourself. Um, if you're skipping a meal because you're prioritizing work or other people or something like maybe um, neglecting things that you love to do every day because you don't have time or energy because it, the whole day is caught up with something else. That's also unkind to ourselves. So how do we love ourselves? Like really spending time to know what do I want in my life? What is important to me? What do I want to do today? And what do I want to do from three to four? What do I want to do from four to five, five to six? You deserve to have that autonomy. You really do. And then love for others. 
you know, this love for others, right, it's not just our family, it's not just our friends, it's also our colleagues and our bosses, actually, it's every, everyone, it's also our society, it's also our country, our nation. When you have that, right, you kind of give out that very nice energy, it starts, it's like a paid forward concept, you heard of paid forward, you give love, you don't have to expect it back, just give it, when you plant a seed, it will spread, and it will somehow return back to you. And yeah, that's one of the things I wanted to share with you. Okay, so coming here, everyone, is a very important thing. Okay, how do we create this very nice, psychologically safe space in the office? So there are a lot of ways we can do that. Okay, I want to share this with you. So number one is at the office right now, we really need to have this synergy. And synergy is when you have like some flexibility in your job and you love your tasks and your role. There might be some parts that you don't really enjoy, but hopefully that the majority of it is what you like to do in that job. So you have the satisfaction, you have the flexibility, plus you feel like you are performing. And when you have this nice synergy in the middle, that really can help you feel like you are really acing it and you're performing and you really feel like you're being your best self. So this is gonna help you in the first part already. And the second part, how do we create a very nice um, psychologically safe space in our office is to make sure that we choose one of these communication styles. So how many of you know people who could, um, who communicate in a passive way? So passive way is you don't say anything at all and you don't voice out anything at all, even when you're not feeling okay. Aggressive way is when you communicate by being very aggressive, angry energy, Assertive is communicating your point without communicating your emotions. So you're saying what you're feeling, but you're not being so emotional about it. You're really saying this is what I'm going through and you're being firm about it, but still kind and polite. If we can have this kind of transparency, right? It becomes so nice because you don't harbor any bitterness or anger. Plus the office environment becomes like a safe space for us to share what we're going through. And validation is so important. So a lot of times we we all need validation. Validation is different from compliment. So compliment is like, hey, uh, so chanted the design that you did the other day. So validation is like, I really appreciate your effort in doing that design and I can see that you put in a lot of thought into it. So you're like you're really going an extra step with the action. You're validating the action there. The next one is called the progress principle. So you know what, we all have two types of forces la, for our progress at the office. One is events and tasks that really help with our work to make it accelerate, to become an agile kind of a place. Another thing is nourishers, which is you and me and all of us. We need each other, the asset. You are the asset. You are the nourishers. You uplift one another. You go the extra mile to help each other interpersonally the encouragement, the respect, the collegiality, and the validation that we give each other. That's super important. It's not just about work, it's also about the people, right? So that's the main asset actually. So we need to focus on that, to taking care of each other's needs, to taking care of each other's feelings. Because when you have happy people in the company, you have a very nice, happy, productive company as well. So psychologically, safety is so important and very basic for you. I'm sure that you know this, like empathy, empathizing with one another, being kind to one another. Um, let's see. Um, okay, K-drama is soothing. Okay, yes. It is hard because sometimes when you voice out the reality, you will get some bad remarks. Since bad remarks gives more stress, hence keeping it is sugarcoat is the right way to act. Yes, exactly, Haslina. I think I have um, actually heard a lot of people share that with me as well, that they feel afraid to voice out because then there is the consequences that you have to face and then it becomes like, um, you know, detrimental. And then that's more stress after that. So we end up keeping quiet and sugarcoating. So that is why there is more, there is a need for awareness for psychological safety in an office. That's why we need that psychologically safe environment. There's an, there is a need for more awareness in this, uh, in many companies, in many organizations, even in the home as well. If our home is a place where we cannot voice out if we're not feeling good about something that can become, you know, it's every time we voice out, it will become a war, then it's unhealthy also. So how do we do it? 
a very good way is to do it the sandwich way. I, I know you said sugar coat. That's that's true. This is also another way, but um, maybe a like a bit more assertive way, which is the sandwich way, like using the positive, negative, positive. So that positive is the bread, the negative is the meat, and the positive is the bread. So it's like, thank you so much for you know inviting me to do this task and role. I really appreciate it very much. However, at the moment, I do have a lot of things on my plate right now. And I was kind of hoping if maybe someone else could take the lead this time. But I would be so happy to join in in the future once my plate gets a bit more lighter. You know, something like this. I know it's not always easy and it's not always feasible, but you would know the timing, the person, the, the tone, and um, exactly when, right? Let's see. Consequences is more detrimental. Exactly, the consequences. So sometimes it's like how and when. Sometimes voicing out some things and then if it doesn't work and if the consequence is bad, maybe finding another way around it because otherwise you would be suffering, right? And then that's also not safe for you as well. So that's why we need to have more awareness on this. There's something interesting here, you know, everyone. It's called um, heart-centered leadership. So this is the fifth technique, all right? So this is a heart-centered leadership, which is... um. Oops, I think a, can you see the source there? So this is a very nice book actually that talks about how do we lead with wisdom, courage and compassion and being humble and transparent, sincere and really looking at people, you know, for their um, effort and competency and really having a sense of tr some trust and compassion. So I think having this kind of heart centered leadership in organizations is going to be something that can help a lot to strengthen the psychological safety. And these are some tips and techniques for maybe bosses or even us for colleagues, for colleagues to ask each other. So I remember whenever my friend would ask me, right, like, um, have you had your lunch? And then if I say no, then she would know that I'm very busy and something's happening with me. And then she would check in with me. So checking in with each other is super important. We all need this, all of us. Like asking these open-ended questions, right, helps us to know what they're going through. How was your day today? Instead of saying, how are you? Saying, um, what are some of your concerns actually at the moment? What's really on your mind? Instead of, what are you doing now? And why are you stressed? Why didn't you reply? Tell me your problem. These are like a bit more, you know, um, a bit more like interrogative kind of a thing. So helpful response. Okay, remember when you ask a question, you're opening a can of something, of worms. So we kind of need to, oh, thank you so much, Karina. Thank you so much. Yeah, so you need to know how to respond. And these are some very nice templates here. So like, I'm so sorry for what you're facing. I can't imagine, it must be so difficult. It's not easy. Um, you're feeling you know, a lot of emotions about that. And it's okay for you to feel sad. I got, um, I do have a client that was extremely devastated when she lost her pet and she was grief having like extreme grief you know like crying every day even after almost six months She's still crying almost every day and some people would tell her it's just a dog it's just an animal and that made her worse so when people tell you that right they are undermining and trivializing what you're going through and people do that with good intention they don't mean to do that but they they want to help but they don't know how so these are some very helpful responses staying with the person's feelings, allowing them to feel that feeling. Like this is a safe space for you. You know, we're here as a group for you. Are you going through something? Is there something we can help you out with? I remember when a few of my colleagues, when my friends, my best friends and, and me, we, we lost our best friend last year. And it was nice that we had a very nice uh, debriefing session in our, um, in our campus. We had a very nice conversation. We were checking on with each other. Um, are you okay? If you want to cry, call me. And then it was really nice to have that because then you heal faster. So it's very important for us to normalize crying, normalize feeling down, and then help people to know that it's not that you're weak or something's wrong with you. It's okay to feel weak, I mean, to feel down. And then we help each other to come up together. So this is a little bit of a summary for you, everyone. I'm going to now come to... Um, questions for you. So this is a nice ad that I saw on Toyota, the, the quote I mean. Life may not be easy, but you know what? It'll be amazing. It's, it's not easy, but we got this. 
we can get through it step by step. I just want to share with you a little bit about Nalluri as well over here. They offer, um, we offer these services here, actually Nalluri, right, this platform. We offer um, all of these services here. So we have health coaching, which is actually using the app if you check out on Play Store. There's also a food journal, which is actually um, actual dietitians check the meals and comment. You will have 24-7 access to them. A connected weighing scale, we have a planner, you have a thought journal, you have daily modules and lots of other nice goodies. And you actually have access to several coaches, which is like a psychologist. You have a fitness coach, medical advisor, all kinds of coaches. So just want to share with you a little bit about Nalluri. You can check us out on Play Store, yeah. So thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to come to your questions right now. Um, OK, so I guess we can um, take any questions, everyone. Would you like to share with us or maybe share your thoughts or something that you're going through? Or maybe something that you want to figure out how to face. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. All right. Um, well, uh, just a reminder for everyone: you guys can leave your questions in the chat box. In the meantime, there is a few questions, uh, perhaps that maybe you can, uh, that I listened just now in the talk, and I will also have like a few questions in my mind. Is, um, you have mentioned a lot about psychomatic symptoms, uh, and like people, one one thing that you asked a lot is, uh, are you aware of it? Uh, do you realize it? So it made me realize that people might not or tend to not really be aware that they have issues until or until the psychomatic symptoms come out. So is there a way we can actually realize this without the symptoms coming up? Or is there any other like before it becomes bad per se? Because symptoms would mean that it's already bad. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you so much, Karina, for that question. Yeah, that's very true, actually. How do we um, recognize it before it manifesting out psychosomatically, right? So imagine if we have like, um, you know, if, if we keep like, let's say drinking water, imagine that you keep drinking water right now and your stomach is already very full, but you feel like, no, I need to keep drinking like this amount, little liters of water because that's what I was told and I have to do it. Even though I'm full and I feel like puking, I still have to do it. Just ignore the symptoms and keep doing it. Eventually, your stomach will say, I don't care what you're doing. I'm done. I can't take it. And you got to like reject the water and then you're going to vomit. So it's something like that. When we keep having a lot of emotions, right? And then we keep like sweeping it under the carpet and we keep, keep ignoring it. Your body is going to say like, Oh, your heart is like, okay, I cannot take it anymore, all of this. And then your body's just out of balance. Because whenever you're having stress, right, there's this, it's not just emotional, it's physical. There is the hormone that's being produced. There's the chemicals that are being produced in our body. So your body's going to say like, mayday, mayday, something's happening. It's all out of control. And it's going to come out physically. So psychosomatically. So how can we prevent it is by being really observant about your own symptoms like you can you know yourself like today i feel like my heart is palpitating more than usual okay stop first and try to address that don't just like ignore that and just keep going because then it will come out some other way it can come out as chest pain suddenly can come out in so many other ways so try to address it before you start to feel it physically then so look out for the red flags like all of a sudden you feel like you're like you know remember the columns just now if you can notice any of those columns then at least you can start to realize that like, I'm not sleeping well. I don't have appetite to eat. I feel like my heart is palpitating. I feel like I'm, you know, I, I find like myself feeling worthless. My mind is going blank. I feel like quitting. So these are things to really look out for. Then you know that I think I'm going through something. I better do something before it comes out physically. Oh, I think um, maybe I can also take Monzi's question here. Monzi has a really good question here. like. If we keep telling ourselves that we're not to be blamed, then it's actually our fault. Then we are deluding ourselves. Exactly. So I think we need to be really honest with ourselves, you know, because I think a lot of people, what they go through is they feel self blame when it's not their fault. Or sometimes some people don't want to take accountability when it is their fault. So it can be either one of the spectrums, either, you know, they blaming themselves even when it's not their fault or when it, they are supposed to take accountability, they don't want to look at it. So they have like a filter. Their filter is different. They don't see their flaw. They only see the, like, I only want to see what I'm doing right. Whatever my flaw is, I don't hear, I don't see. So I think it's very important for us to be sincere with ourselves and maybe check in with a very good friend to say that, what do you think? Am I doing something wrong? Is it me? If you feel like you can't see it, then you can at least have a bit of a checkpoint, you know, because 
if we if we were perfect, we'd be able to see we're all not perfect, right? So sometimes we might need someone to check in with us to kind of sh to check whether do you think this is me? Is it me or is it you know them? Then it helps us to get a bit of an overview. I think yeah, we need that self awareness very much. Maybe anyone else would like to ask something like um, how to with depending on the stage that you're going through in burnout or how to prevent something. I think we can we can um, take in more questions as well. Okay, so maybe anybody want to share what you're going through, maybe at your office or something, or maybe in your personal life, or maybe someone who you know and you just like to share about that. It'll take a while for some of them to open up. Yeah. Okay. All right. No worries at all. So anytime that you're ready. In the meantime, um, maybe I can share with you also that I do know like a, a lot of clients as well share with me that they feel like um, they like being in the organization that they're in, but they just feel like they don't belong in that division and they really want to switch to another division, you know, and they're so afraid to tell someone. And then usually what they would do with me is they would um, share with me that how do I do it? Can we go through and rehearse the, the, the conversation, how I'm going to talk to my boss? So they would they would do that. And then usually it makes them stronger. And then they feel like, OK, I'm going to do that in my one on one session with my boss. And then they do that and they feel like they can perform better because they love the organization, but they just want to be able to be happy in the role that they've been given. So they try to shift and then they feel happier voicing out, but voicing out at the right platform to the right person at the right timing in the right way. I think that would be a good match. So knowing how to do that. And if someone voices out to you also, knowing how to address their concerns is important, ensuring that they get the help that they need. Otherwise, if it's swept under the carpet, then it will keep coming out like the psychosomatic. Remember, it will burst somewhere else. If we close it here, like it will come out somewhere else. So it's very good for us to address what everyone is going through. Maybe anybody would like to ask a question. Maybe it's not for you, but it's for someone that you know and you just want to ask, you know. Anybody want to share something? Maybe about the stage that you're in or how to cope with that? You can on your mic as well if you... Oh wait, I think you can. Yeah, but you can chat in the chat box, <laughs> yeah. Anyone wants to on their mic? I think uh, you guys can just raise your hand and then we will unmute you. Yeah. If you are at stage five, right? And you find it so hard that you just can't see a way out. I think it's good to actually get some help for that actually. And I have clients who come to me not having clinical disorders. They just want to talk to someone to know how to sort things out. Then they feel like, OK, I'm good to go. I think I know what to do now. And then they're they're on their way and then you know what to do. So sometimes you just need like a tune up or you just need like someone to just be like a mirror. One client even told me this, you know, she said to me like, Pam, I feel like you're my mirror. And I oh, oh no, no, she said you're like you're like my wall. And I was like, I'm a wall. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? And then she said, no, no, no. What I mean is that I can talk to you and you're not going to judge me and then you will reflect and then you will help me realize and suddenly I know what to do. So actually talking to someone who you can trust is important. It can be anyone who you feel you can trust or a psychologist or counselor, someone, because when you reach out, it helps to get another perspective, you know, to kind of like a neutral party, probably that you can sort things out. Right, I think um, there's not really any questions or perhaps uh, it might be quite personal for them, but it's okay. Uh, for everyone here, we will leave Naluri's contact. So in case of anything, you guys want to go seek some support. It doesn't have to be for uh, psychological issues, but any form of like support needed, you can also check out Naluri as well. We will have uh, communications in the email and Telegram group. And if you have any questions also, feel free to uh, PM us about it. And then we can also ask the Nalluri side to help answer in case you're shy or it may be sensitive. So yeah, um, from coming from PMK side, thank you so much, Dr. Pamelia, for this lovely talk. 
learned a lot about it and I really love your energy when it comes to uh, sharing all those pictures. There's a lot of me too moments. So everyone, I would love it if you guys can have like a little reaction or emoji shown uh, just like the click, like the clapping emoji or the applause emoji, a uh, heart shape emoji, just to show your appreciation to Dr. Pam or write it inside the chat box so she can see and feel the energy as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, everyone. You've been awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much.